This is Math 98. We're going to look at section 9.8, which is rational exponents. In other words, writing exponents not just as integers, not as just as positive negative numbers, but also as fractions or maybe as decimals. Like what does that mean? So let's go back to things like square root of x or the cube root of x and think about what those mean. Uh, like this is asking what to the third power um, would give you x, right? Like if, because remember if I go this to the third, those two things undo each other. So that's the same as x. Same thing here. If I go the square root of x squared, I get an x back. So let's tie this back to taking a power to a power. In other words, um, I've got this x, and I want to say x to something squared uh, should give me x. And since these are multiplied together, notice uh, 1 half times 2 is x to the first. Similarly here, x to some power, and then cubed should give me x. I'm going to have a power to a power and multiply. So 1 third times 3 is uh, 1, x to the first. So what these fraction, I'm sorry, what these, uh, these roots do, these radicals with these different indi indices, is this is the same as a 1 half power, and this is the same as a 1 third power. So in general, with these rational roots, or if I had, let's say I had, I'll just say z is my base, z to the 1 fourth power, what that means is we're taking the fourth root of x, or actually in this case of z, because I use z instead of x. So in general, these rational exponents, we can say if I have the nth root of some base, that's the same as a to the power of 1 over that. As long as uh, n is bigger than or equal to 2. So let's think about what these means. 25 to the 1 half power, well, that's the same as the square root of 25, which is 5. Or 8 to the 1 third power, that's the same as the cube root of 8. Like what to the third power is 8? That's 2. And then uh, 81 to the 1 fourth, that's the fourth root of 81. And in this case, it's 3. Now, if you don't know those things, let's grab your calculator and uh, see what we can do about it. So I could do this two different ways. I could just go square root of 25. I could also say 25 to the 1 half power. And notice if I do that, 25 to the, and I'm going to put that 1 half in parentheses, so it takes it to the whole 1 half power. It gives me 5. Or this 81 to the 1 fourth, 81 to the, and then in parentheses, 1 fourth. If you wanted to write 0.25, it's the same thing. That yeah, gives us that 3. Now this fourth root, you can do a fourth root on your calculator. Um, you say what the root index is. I want the fourth root. And then if you go into the math menu, see how this is the xth root. There's a cube root option, but there's also an xth root option. You can just hit 5 or arrow down to it of 81. Again, remember that's the same as 81 to the 1 fourth power. It gives us the 3 as well. All right, let's talk about some of these. Notice I have this negative base. Well, this is the one-third power, so that's a third root. And I know I can do that if this root index is odd, which it is. In other words, I can get a real answer for it. I'm going to rewrite this one, too. This would be, uh, this, is, this is written a little different. This is actually negative third root of 27. It would come out to the same answer, but it is a little different. And then notice this one is completely different. It's a negative exponent. Negative exponents, remember, flip the fraction. This turns it into division. So this is dividing by the cube root of 27. This would be 1 over the third root of 27. So this one is negative 3, but this one is 1 third. And then this one, well, what times itself 3 times gives you negative 125? The answer is negative 5. And again, if you don't know those, those cubes or anything like that, you could do them on your calculator. All right, so let's think about what these ones are asking. This first one, the fourth root of negative 16. What times itself four times would give us a negative number? There's no real solution for that. So we can say no real number. Now notice this one is different. The negative is not being taken to the one-fourth, only the 16 is. So this is negative 
fourth root of 16. Well, the fourth root of 16 is 2, so the answer to this is negative 2. And then this one, the exponent's negative. So this is telling us to divide by the fourth root of 16. In other words, this is the same as this, which would be 1 half. All right, now look at this. I have 25 to the 3 halves. Um, this is a little bit uh, more, like when this was a 1, it was just the square root of 25. So think of this as 25 to the 1 half to the third power, right? 3 times a half is 3 halves. So this is the same as the square root of 25 cubed, which would be 5 cubed, which is 125. And we can generalize that. If I have this, the nth root of a to the m, I can write that as a fraction where the power part, the exponent, is up there, and the radical part is there. That's a good generalization for these rational um, exponents. All right, so this, let's do some of these. So um, these ones on the left, I just want you to rewrite them with a rational exponent. In other words, rewrite them in the form something to just a number power. So that's a p. <laughs> uh, power is 3. The root is 7, so this would be the same as x to the 3 sevenths. All right, the power is 8. The root is 4, so this would be the same as x to the 8 fourths. Well, 8 fourths is 2, which is the same as x squared. Fourth root of n to the ninth would be n to the nine fourths. All right, and these ones over here, let's evaluate them. So four to the three halves. So notice what we're doing is we're square rooting four and we're cubing it. So I'm going to think of this as the square root, right? You don't need to write the two, but the second root of four to the third power. Just a side note, if you do this, uh, it's the same thing. Let's go ahead and do this. Uh, root of 4 is 2. 2 cubed is 8. Uh, 81 to the 3 halves. You're square rooting 81, which is 9, and then cubing that. Right? This is the square root of 81. That's what the 2 the, in the denominator does. Cubed, which is 9 cubed, which is something that I'm going to do on my calculator. 9 cubed. 729. 16 to the 3 fourths, the fourth root of 16 cubed. Fourth root of 16 is 2, 2 cubed is 8. And then this last one, notice we have a negative exponent, 4 to the negative 5 halves. Well, the negative makes me divide, so it's 1 over the 2 in the denominator is a square root, and then to the fifth power. So this would be 1 over, square root of 4 is 2, 2 to the 5th, 2, 4, 8, 16 is 32. This is 1 32nd. Notice the negative square root doesn't make the answer negative. It, it make, turns it into division. That's what it does. I'm going to write a few more, and then we will rewrite them and be on our way. All right, uh, 5 to the 3 fifths times 5 to the 7 fifths. So remember, when we are multiplying, uh, what we can do is we can add those exponents. So we've got 3 fifths plus 7 fifths, which would be 5 to the 10 fifths, which is 5 squared, which we could write as 25. All right, x to the 4th to the 1 half. When we have power to a power, we multiply this. So this is the same as x to the 4th times 1 half, which is x squared. Right, because this is the square root of x to the fourth. Uh, y to the sixth to the four thirds, again, when we have a power to power, we multiply. So six times four thirds. Think of this six as six over one. We can divide that out to a two. Two times four is eight. Y to the eight. Two more examples over here I want to think about. When I have division, I'm subtracting the exponents. So this is the same as v. Uh, to the 3 fifths minus 2 fifths, which would be v to the 1 fifth. Similarly here, this is subtraction x to the 2 thirds, uh, x to the 5 thirds, so x to the 
2 thirds minus 5 thirds. That should be a 3. Notice that leaves me x to the negative 3 thirds, which is x to the negative 1, which is 1 over x. Great. Hey, give these questions a good go um, from the chapter. Message me with any questions or post any questions that you have in the forum.